Hello everyone, this is Rick Grantham over at Excel TV. The purpose of this video is to show you Monte Carlo simulation in Excel using a uniform distribution curve with discrete data. Now, previously we've done Monte Carlo simulations with a normal distribution, which is kind of your bell curve, as well as a Poisson distribution or a Poisson distribution, which is uh, you get a very high increase at the very beginning and then a long tail. So if you're interested in seeing what Monte Carlo looks like in Excel for those distributions, I'll leave a link somewhere either in this video or down below. Well, with that said, here's what we're going to get into today. We're going to define what uh, discrete data is, define what a uniform distribution is, and when you might see that in real life. And then we'll go through setting up a scenario where we bring all of that into a scenario where we apply Monte Carlo simulation, and then show you how to set all of that up and then we'll say a thousand or so distributions or a thousand or so iterations and then from there show you what potential output could look like. So that's coming up next. First let's get into what discrete data is. Uh, discrete data is count data that involves integers. So in other words one, two, three, four, five. There is no 3.278611. You know there is no there is no decimal points, it's just count data. By contrast, from discrete data, there is continuous data, which we're not going through today. Uh, that could take on any, any values. An example of that might be your weight. By your weight, I mean it could always be divided into another decimal if you had a scale that actually showed you that. Uh, similarly, time. Even though we might have time in seconds, there's always fractions of seconds, etc. So that'd be an example of continuous data. Today we're going to work through discrete data, and we're also going to talk about a uniform distribution. So a uniform distribution is where you have the same likelihood of all potential occurrences happening. So for example, the rolling of a dice. You have a one in six opportunity that you're going to hit a certain number every time that you roll it or tossing a coin, you're going to have a one and two opportunity. Or a deck of cards, by that I mean coming up um, spades or diamonds, etc. So in other words, there's an equal probability. So this is much different from a bell curve, as much different from a Poisson distribution and other types of curve. So now let's talk about how you go about setting that up. So first off, let's scroll in here on our inputs before we get into the simulation. And in this case, for this, we're going to say, okay, our scenario is we're going to roll a true dice. Uh, the odds of coming up with any specific number on that will be one in six. And if you roll a six, you get $1,000. And if you roll a one through five, you get nothing. And so we, so here we set up a table uh, where we have the values and what's given for the dice. And we just have some averages here. So your average for here, and we'll, we'll say you were doing this in a casino, the odds are on average you would lose a little bit. So we kind of work that into the equation here. So this was not exactly 200, it was 210 to make the odds against you. Uh, and the percentage of opportunities you're going to win is one out of six. So one out of six times you're actually going to win something. One minus that, 83% is the probability you're going to lose. So with these being our givens for our scenario, let's walk through the simulation. So first off, we have set up here 1,000 iterations. I'm not going to scroll all the way through and show you that, but we do have 1,000 iterations where we just have count type data. We have one here. Let's go ahead and just copy that all the way down. See, that went all the way down to 1,000. Next, we're going to use a rand between. Now let's click in here to see what this looks like. Uh, we have a rand between, which basically says, give me a random number between one and six, a random integer between one and six. And that's what this does here. So you're just as likely to have a one as a four. And the thing about this is every time that you click in this and you refresh it, all of the numbers update. So this is also copied all the way down through a thousand. We then have a VLOOKUP from saying, give me, give me H4, which is random. Give me the table called dice odds which is this table right here. That's the odds. Um, and give me the second one, which is the value. So simple would be lookup. Again, copy it all the way down. And you'll see again as we click in here, everything updates again. 
and then have in here the average. Um, might be easier to see coming to this next one. Okay, so I have an average of, of all the values that have happened so far. This way we can see how uh, the overall average changes as we get closer to a thousand iterations. But it may vary wildly in the first five to 10 to 15 or even 100 iterations, which we'll show you in the output. But over time, all of those would be equal. Okay, and then we have a cumulative as well, uh, just so that we can show you, just so I can show you, okay, well, as we added all these up, how much money overall would you expect to win or lose, not just the average of each roll? So, Let's scroll over here and look at the output then. So we have, again, given this, we have a thousand iterations. We would expect on average to lose 8.3, but we're not gonna lose that every time. So what would that look like with a thousand iterations? Well, a thousand iterations on average, see, we made a thousand dollars right up front. And then the next four or five rolls here lost everything. You see that shows here. So when people think they're doing really well, it was say rolling dice and then they they lose everything within five or six rolls and then on the average they're going to lose anyways uh, and then we have cumulative what does that look like cumulative iterations or cumulative for a thousand iterations that would go negative pretty quick and overall you could potentially be down twenty thousand twenty thousand dollars by the time you got to roughly 600 your 600th roll and then you go on a little bit of a winning streak and a bit of a losing streak. But what would that look like if you didn't stay at the table for that long? You only had 100 iterations. Well, in this case, you can see uh, you would actually be positive or almost positive had you stepped away at 100 iterations. You'd just be down just a little bit of money, but there's a chance you might have walked away here once you were losing $1,700. 10 iterations, you only stayed at the table for rolling the dice for 10 times. Chances are you're going to come up losing. Now, the thing here, we'll notice at 10 iterations here, we're losing money. And see how this looks pretty much negative through, yeah, negative through 10. Let's come over here and just refresh all this by hitting, by hitting the random variable again. We'll hit enter. Hit enter again. And you'll see the graphs on the right are all updating. Wow, in this case, you started out very negative, and cumulatively, you went very negative as well. You ended up losing $25,000, and you were very negative even at the very first 10 iterations. So the point of this is that, you know, the more iterations you have, so as you scroll over here to the left, another thing that you can do is say, hey, well, I, I want to play with this a little bit. Let's assume the odds are a little bit different. Instead, I'm not going to win anything at one through five, uh, but I could win, we'll say, $500 if I roll a six. How does that look now? Wow, you could go on a losing streak for quite a bit here with getting no money. And in this case, a thousand iterations. Wow, we actually made money in this case. But if you started right off, you ended up losing money. So anyways, that is Monte Carlo simulation using uniform, discrete data. Uh, places you might use this in real life outside of the casino, because the casino is expecting that you're going to be there for a thousand iterations. Oh, sorry, they're expecting you're going to be there for a few iterations, but they're going to be there for thousands and thousands and thousands of iterations from different people, and that's how they make their money. Not only that, but also the odds being slightly in their favor, right? So that's how they're making their money. Um, but where would you use this in real life, say in finance or something like that? Um, by itself, I've randomly or I've rarely used it. However, I have used a uniform distribution in combination with other distributions. And here's what I mean. Let's say you have 10 salesmen or 10 salespeople who are very, who are just as likely to bring in a deal to you. However, uh, each of those, which is a uniform distribution, they're just as likely. 
However, uh, one person is more likely to bring in larger deals versus smaller deals, which may be more of a bell curve. And so multiplying a uniform distribution uh, times the average size of the deal, and not even average, based on another Monte Carlo simulation, minus the expenses that would be associated with that, et cetera, you can start to see a lot of the way the different simulations and different curves all come in together. So anyways, that's it. That's a uniform discrete distribution using Monte Carlo simulation in Excel. Till next time, keep on excelling.